Hi, I'm Mike Carroll, Irvine Council Member and Chairman of The Great Park. We are looking at the largest print photograph in the world taken with the largest pinhole camera in the world. This massive 111 foot image is of the former Marine Corps Air Station El Toro before it was transformed into The Great Park. In 1993, all activities on this base were transferred to the Marine Corps Air Station Miramar and this El Toro base was decommissioned in 1999. Visitors from over the world can come to Irvine and see this remarkable artistic exhibit and also see the legacy of the Marine Air Station that is still remembered here today. Okay, so we're here today. Uh, you know, uh, we have this statewide program called California Gold, and I would like to say this is truly Irvine Gold. We have Jacques and Clayton and the Great Picture. So Jacques, why don't you tell us, what is the Great Picture? The Great Picture was conceived in 19, or 2006 by the Legacy Project, which was a group of six photographers who would gotten together to do a 15-year documentary on the then shuttered El Toro Marine Base. We started in 2003 and went on for 15 plus years. The Great Picture was one of the projects that was um, initiated by Clayton, my partner over here. It was his idea coming back from China. He had an idea of doing um, some pinhole photography with some of these wonderful buildings that we had at the base. And we found a building that worked with a view of the control towers and the runways, which was the heart and soul of the base at the time. Clayton, tell us a little bit about the great picture, how it came to be. Well, Jacques alluded to it um, briefly, but uh, I was, uh, I teach in China um, and I was working with a group of graduate students and we decided to come up with a, a mobile collapsible pinhole that we carted around China to some of its historic sites and it was a fairly large size of a living room and to create a panorama we had to do three of those separate exposures by moving the camera just a little to create a panorama. And we did that on muslin, and um, those pictures are now lost to posterity, unfortunately. But at that time, I realized that we had created the world's largest pinhole pictures at that point. But it kind of went largely unrecognized. And so while I was sitting on the plane on the tarmac waiting to come back to the United States, I just thought occurred to me that w this wasn't big enough. And at the time... So you did this because you weren't recognized. You needed more recognition. <laughs> oh, I see how this no, works. No, no, <laughs> it was just sheer force of will. Can it be done? That, but I was, we were uh, working together at that time with the Legacy Project, and we had complete access to the decommissioned base at the time. And so I realized that we had a lot of large buildings there that could potentially be converted to a camera. And so I just proposed that to the group and to their great credit. They, they didn't think I was totally crazy. And well, we didn't know what we were getting into and the rest is sort of history. Yeah. And tell me a little bit about how you ended up here at the Great Park, at the you know, soon to be decommissioned El Toro Marine Base. Well, that started off because there were a number of people in the group that taught photography at Cypress College. Uh, Jerry Birchfield, for example, and Clayton was teaching there, Mark as well. And so they started bringing classes over here as, as a photo op shoot, you know, here's something different. And realized very quickly that this was a gold mine that needed to be recorded for history. And so, I'm cutting to the chase here, but I mean, so the six of us got together and started formally taking pictures of every structure here, then doing different projects, and including this was one of them. Wow, and Clayton, this photograph that the two of you produced holds a worldwide record. And can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Well, just the sheer scale, it's over three stories high and a, a third of a football, football field wide. It actually made the Guinness Book of World Record, not that that's important to artists, but it did. And I think one of the more significant aspects of why it's the world's largest is because we did this the hard way. No cheating, it's not stitched together, it's not digital. It's, it's uh, conventional silver gelatin-based photography. We had to hand coat with an emulsion. 
We had to have actual light imprint it for quite a while, process it with wet chemistry the old-fashioned way. This ain't going to be done again by anybody. Yeah. So what we have here in the city of Irvine is, is the largest pinhole camera photograph on the planet Earth. And it was produced here by the two of you. And six. Six of us, but two of yeah. you guys here are producers here. Here it is. Um, a little bit about um, the actual mechanics of it. So you said it took a number. You had to expose this uh, picture to light. And how long a period was that? 35 minutes. 35 minutes it needed. Now, what happens, like, for example, Jacques, if it went for 30, how did you know you needed 35 minutes? And what happens if it was like 36 minutes or 34 minutes? Well, we spent months trying to figure out how long the exposure actually needed to be. We consulted pinhole experts around the world, and we had estimates from a few hours to three weeks, I think. Um, and we made a bunch of experiments, mostly Clayton and Doug did a bunch of experiments to try to find out what the actual exposure was. None of the reasons we've been given or the rules we've been given worked. None of them. We had to start from scratch. And ultimately, they come up by testing, they came up with, with the right answer. If the exposure had been longer than 35 minutes, we would have gotten wider, less and less detail. It would have become whiter and whiter to the point where you wouldn't have anything. So this was a one-shot deal. There was no going back. Um, we were on pins and needles the night we did this, uh, just hoping beyond hope that it would, would work. And then would you say, how? What, tell me about the moment at which you knew. You said, I think to me, Clayton, that uh, a custom uh, developing area was built to develop the photograph. So tell us about that and that the moment. We had on site, because of the nature of this thing, we had to actually construct the world's largest chemical processing tray or tank. And that was built with, with wood and basically pool liners. And we had to flood that with developer with 10 marine pumps. And we had to then take that out and put in fixer. And we had to do this in the same time frame that somebody in a dark room with hands on trays had just a few minutes. So we had to move quick. So it was, it was really touch and go like, yes, we did our tests. Yeah. We did our tests and we got the exposure. We only had one chance at this thing. So when it was processing out, Trust me, we were like high strung, waiting for that image to appear in the soup. And when density started to appear at that point, well, at least we've got something. And when it fully developed, that's when we were blown away, when we spooled it back up and started washing it. You, I, I should also mention that you need to understand that the original exposure is not this positive image. It's a negative image because of the way light interacts. So the tones are reversed, but that's what makes it fascinating in its own way. So is it fair to say we had, in addition to the world's largest pinhole camera photograph in the city of Irvine, we also had the world's largest um, darkroom and development. <laughs> yep, yep, and, and holding tank. Yep. I can't even imagine um, the, the depth and the, and, and the breadth of that. 400, 400 um, volunteers. Had to have. If it wasn't if it wasn't for all the volunteers, this could have never happened. So six of you, the the, the photography team, four hundred of you, literally pulling through in the dark room to actually develop the the quote unquote print. I guess we can can we call it a print? Yes. And can you tell us a little bit, maybe Jacques, about the photograph itself, the things that really speak to you, some of the real the highlights. Well, historically, I think the photograph of Clayton alluded to it is really interesting because it was taken at a time when analog photography was almost dying and digital photography had, was rising to the top. And this was taken almost at that moment of intersection. Um, interestingly, this is all analog, but digitally it had been reproduced within 24 hours, I don't know, in 300 different sites around the world. Um, as far as the image itself, what what I appreciate about it, it's very impressionistic, which I think really gives it a nice historical feel to it. Um, the detail along the important part, which is the control towers, 
you know, the palm trees, you even have a toilet over there. Everything is in crisp detail. And that's the heart and soul of the base. And I think that's, that's why the image was chosen. And it's a beautiful piece. At, at first, when I saw it, I was, I didn't know what to make of it because it wasn't like a regular crystal clear sharp photo. But the impressionistic historical feel and the sharpness where it was needed, I, I thought was fascinating. Yeah, I, I feel like you all, you, you captured a moment in time and a moment in our history, you know, Absolutely. here at Irvine that is really unprecedented and unparalleled. And it, yes, at the same time, everything from the hills to the left, the, the hillscape, if you will, as you kind of go up on our, you know, northern sphere of our city to the, to the, 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 the clarity and, and the, um, the focus and, and the uh, sharpness of the radar towers, the control tower, and even that really awesome, you know, lone palm tree on the right. Clayton, do you have anything to add as far as what you see in that photograph? Well, the reason why it looks painterly is because we had to hand coat emulsion on it, so it wasn't gonna be perfect, and we knew that going in. And that's, that's part of the creative aspect of it. So superimposed over the raw documentation, there is sort of an impressionistic aspect to it that, that depending how you look at it, you could say the transience of things, but there's at the same time, there's a permanence about that image too that's, that's locked in. That, that's what I see as, as a statement of what that picture is saying. It's a, a, a specific moment, as you alluded to, that was locked in, but there's still something transient about the whole thing. Wow. Things change. Has anyone tried to make a larger one, to your knowledge? Nope. Probably not going to happen because too expensive, the logistics are awful. While we were doing this, we were anything but artists. We were construction workers, politicians, fundraisers. Ane anecdotally, yeah. the night that it was done, it was over 100 degrees in there with fumes from all the toxic chemicals we were using, which so it was, people were passing out. It was wonderful. Um, you also have to realize that the chemicals we had, we used 1,800 gallons of chemicals, okay? To, and then we washed it with fire hoses all of those materials had to be captured in 55 gallon drums and brought to the EPA. So and I we mean, did it. And we, we did, did it, it all, yeah. Wow. Well, thank you for being good environmental stewards on top of everything else. Well, we really can't thank you enough. I guess, tell us a little bit about um, the great picture being on tour. I know that it's really, it's toured many places. Can you talk a little about where it's gone and where it's been exhibited? and? reactions it's it's uh, it's been all over the world it's been um, in various parts of the United States um, over in Riverside it's been in Los Angeles Pasadena it's been in New Orleans it was at the Smithsonian Institute at the Udvar Hazy Aerospace Museum in Virginia for six months it's been in Beijing um, it's quite a beast so the logistics of, of doing a traveling exhibition are pretty considerable, but what I would say is please don't keep it in the crate. <laughs> it, yeah. it has well, to be seen. I will tell you this, <laughs> on behalf of the city of Irvine, and thank you so much for doing this, and we will absolutely find the permanent home that it deserves. Uh, and it obviously needs to be in our community and hopefully on this in this great park at the home of the former El Toro Marine Base that this picture captures. So it's really just a wonderful, remarkable, amazing, not just picture, but effort and, and, and you know, sort of human effort and piece of, you know, science, like you said, you know, writ large. Uh, so thank you so much for this. We really appreciate it. Pleasure. Pleasure. Yeah, thank you.